Okay guys, this is a short video to introduce um, psychological interventions, which is a really huge uh, component of the Unit 3 Applied Sports Psychology exam. It actually equates to 50% of your mark overall and requires you to act or understand what recommendations and interventions a sports psychologist might use to work with athletes at different stages. Perhaps first of all it's important to just look at the role of a sports psychologist which as you can see sort of uh, from the highlighted areas there it's about evaluating and assessing the athletes and the clients using strategies to help them working with other professionals like coaches or physiologists or nutritionists and actually probably a bit of counselling and nurturing through goal setting and other strategies to help them work through potential issues or to ultimately just improve. And again, just to give a broader context, um, sports psychology or psychologists within the sports industry might be specifically a sports performance psychologist and work with athletes or teams to improve their performance for high level um, competition um, or they might be more of an exercise psychologist and working with people, possibly athletes, but possibly uh, members of the public to try to adjust their exercise behaviours and figure out, um, you know, how to improve their mental and physical health. So it's likely in your um, psychology exam that you'll be giving it or you will be giving a case study and you'll need to identify some of the qualities that the athlete or team in that case study might be struggling with or might be lacking or might need developing. And by by qualities or by psychological constructs, what we mean is these kinds of things, the things that you really need to perform well <clears throat> in sport or in exercise. So things like persistence, motivation, being calm in competition, being able to manage yourself and control some of those more negative emotions, um, managing stress and anxiety, all stuff that we perhaps uh, can recognise from our own sporting performances and stuff that needs sometimes some strategies to help manage. So in terms of your specification and what they mean by psychological qualities, they mean the characteristics or things that you possess, the attributes that facilitate optimal performance, that make you and allow you to perform as best as you can. And as we've sort of addressed already, the language of the specification focuses on these kinds of things, mental toughness, communication with te te teammates, positive self-talk, what you say in your head needs to be as positive as possible, regulation of the levels of arousal, because you'll learn obviously that having excessive or inadequate levels of arousal means you don't play your best. So these are the key things that uh, we need to have or possess to enable us to perform well. And the case study generally um, suggests that the athlete or team in the case study will uh, seek guidance from a sports psychologist and the role that you'll have to play is writing the interventions that will help that case, that, um, case study athlete or team. And interventions basically means things that are implemented, things that are used, things that are put in place, either for an individual athlete or for a team, to help them take action and make improvement and become more effective. And things that can affect the way they think and process and make decisions, things that affect how they feel, um, you know, things like anger management um, goals and strategies or things that affect how they act. So this cognitive, affective and behavioural factors will be quite uh, frequently mentioned through the psychology unit. Often these interventions are, are not just something the athlete does on, the, on their own. They, they work with a coach, they might work with a personal trainer, they might work with a sports psychologist. So it's often is initiated by someone other than the athlete to help give them the skills they need to manage those qualities, to improve their confidence, to reduce their anger or aggression on pitch. Um, and obviously we're working to optimise those qualities and make those as effective as possible. It's a lot to do with self-management. Now this um, diagram isn't brilliant, but it does sort of illustrate some of the connection between the interventions, the techniques that sports psychologists or coaches might use, things like goal setting, imagery, self-talk, relaxation, um, these things you'll learn about and how they intend to try to improve 
um, motivation levels, coping, managing your own emotional levels, focus and concentration, regulating arousal levels, um, communication between team members and between leaders within a team. So this just shows the interconnection of them to help you deal with things like injury and work through difficult times, work through losses if you're individually not performing well or your team's losing a lot. We might have these techniques to impro you know, try to address the things that might not be working psychologically. Similarly, this next image is actually awful, but what it does show, you may not be able to see clearly, is this is almost like a schedule through the week, but it shows how not just the athletes would be working to do physical skills or technical skills training, but also psychological skills. So on this day, Wednesday, they're working on visualization on um, on this week, on a different week, earlier weeks, they're working on self-talk. They're working on goal setting here. So it is all integrated in the same way you would plan other types of training. What we need to do is have psychological skills training built in for these athletes. And that's basically what you're going to be recommending in the final um, activity three of your exam paper. So this is just a very quick summary slide of the sorts of language you need to be mindful of. The qualities are the things that your athletes need to have. Motivation, control, you know, controlled arousal levels, um, self-esteem, self-confidence, etc. The skills is what we want them to, to use. They need the skill to manage those qualities, to make sure they've got optimal level of motivation. And not too much and not too little. And then the strategies or the interventions are the things that you're going to recommend they use to help them learn to have the skills to manage those qualities to make them optimal. And as I just illustrated, these things need practice. It's not something that you will just offer them and they'll be brilliant at. It needs to be part of a mental training, a psychological skills training routine. You know, so this goes on a lot in the background before, during and after performances. So finally, this is just the specification content for F1, which is just what I've talked through there.